We're now going to look at some application problems involving vectors. Remember that when we're working with application problems, many times the important thing is to draw a good diagram, draw a good picture. And so uh, that's what we're going to focus on. Example, an object is launched with an initial velocity of 200 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Determine the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity. See if you can draw a diagram that represents this situation. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start off with is the horizontal. And it says that we're launching at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. So I'm going to put this little point here. That's our launching point. Draw the vector up this way and label this 30 degrees. We are also told that the initial velocity is 200 meters per second. So remember that vectors have both a length and a direction. The 30 degrees above the horizontal is the direction, which means that this part must correspond to the length. So 200 meters per second. And our job is to decompose this thing into a horizontal component and a vertical component. So I'll draw a right triangle like this. There's our 30 degree angle. 200 meters per second is the length of that vector. So let's label this part x and this part y. Now we've seen this many, many, many times before. Once we've reduced this into a right triangle, we should know what to do. Cosine of 30 degrees is equal to, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 200. We can solve this for x by multiplying both sides by 200. x is 200 times cosine of 30 degrees. And in fact, we know exactly what cosine of 30 degrees is. Cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. And so x is equal to 100 times the square root of 3, and the units are meters per second. In the same way, we can get y, sine of 30 degrees, is equal to y over 200 adjacent over hypotenuse, excuse me, opposite over hypotenuse. So y is equal to 200 times sine of 30 degrees y is equal to 200, sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so y is equal to 100 meters per second. And so the velocity vector of this, uh, of this uh, projectile is going to be 100 square root of 3 comma 100, and the units are meters per second. Example, a woman leaves home, walks 3 miles north, and then 2 miles southeast. How far is she from home? And what direction would she need to walk to return home? How far has she walked by the time she gets home? Try to draw this out in the diagram and see if you can figure out the information. The first thing we're going to need to do is make sure that we understand our compass directions. So most people, north and south make sense. North is up, south is down. East and west, sometimes people get confused. But if you just stop and think for a moment, you can usually come up with something that will make sense to you. For example, most people think of the uh, west coast as being on the left of a map when you look at the map of the United States. And so that makes west over here and east over here. Uh, some people have the mnemonic device, never eat soggy waffles. It doesn't matter how you remember it as long as you remember it. So let's begin. We have the woman's starting position. She's going to walk three miles north. and then two miles south and east, so down and right, southeast. And the question we are asked to figure out is, first of all, what direction must she walk to get back home? And then also, how far has she traveled in total? So I'm going to draw this arrow here, pointing back to home. So this is one complete lap. And let's see. Well, we have to come up with some sort of vector representation of these uh, of these of these uh, directions. So we're going to call this one u, and we're going to call this one v. If we're saying that u represents walking three miles straight north, it should make sense that we can call this vector 0, 3. So three miles in the up direction, which is the north direction. The two miles in the south and east is a little bit more complicated because you just can't do two this way and then two negative two this way because the, your, your total distance won't be two miles. You have two miles in the x component and two miles in the y component. But if you think about it, you do recognize that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And so we can use our various bits of trigonometry information to put this together. We can use sine and cosine to calculate uh, these two sides. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. If you remember the um, 
special triangles. We had a 45, 45, 90 triangle. There were certain relationships between the hypotenuse and the sides. It really doesn't matter what you do. Uh, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just label both sides of these x because it's a 45, 45, 90. So these two are the same. And just apply the Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus x squared is equal to 2 squared. So 2x squared is equal to 4. x squared is equal to 2. So x is equal to the square root of 2. We don't need to worry about plus or minus because these are actual uh, lengths here is, as I've drawn it. We just need to make sure we use the signs when we are indicating that we're going right and down. So the vector v is going to be the vector um, square root of 2 comma negative square root of 2. So we're going to go right, that's the square root of 2 here, and then down is the negative square root of 2. This third vector w is the one that we're not sure of. We don't know what it is. We're going to figure it out. Um, I've already used the letter x down here, which is a little bit unfortunate, so we'll just call this one x1 comma y1. All right, so the, ma the main picture here is that we're going to return back to where we started. So u plus v plus w is equal to 0, 0. If you complete this lap, you've gone nowhere. And so we can plug this in, 0, comma, 3 plus root 2, comma, negative root 2 plus x1, comma, y1 is equal to 0, 0. Um, we're going to just go ahead and combine these together first. So we're going to have root 2 plus x1, comma, 3 minus root 2 plus y1 is equal to 0, 0. So x1, well, square root of 2 plus x1 equals 0, and 3 minus root 2 plus y1 is equal to 0. So our x1 is negative square root of 2, and our y1 is equal to square root of 2 minus 3. Now, at this point, we can put these into a uh, picture and, and work it all out, but I'm going to go ahead and make the decimal approximation now, as it turns out that we're, uh, there's not much else that we can do with this until we start to work with decimals. So uh, so negative square root of 2, let's put this over here, negative square root 2, this is equal to negative 1.4142, y is going to be square root of 2 minus 3, which is going to be negative 1.5858. And you'll notice that our x value is negative, which means you're going to the left. Our y value is negative, which means you're going down. And that kind of makes sense with our picture here. So we now have our uh, x and y coordinates. What's the question asking us? How far is she from home? Well, how far is she? This is going to be the length of this vector. So we can find the length of this vector. Uh, try not to turn the page over. So the length of w is equal to the square root of negative 1.4142 squared plus negative 1.5858 squared, which I can just dump into a calculator. Square root of negative 1.4142 squared plus negative 1.5858 squared is equal to 2.124. Eight. And so that's how far she is from home. What direction does she need to travel? Well, we have our x and our y here. So our x is negative and our y is negative. And so this is 1.4142. This is negative 1.5858. Uh, let's just find what that angle is right here, and then we'll figure out how to describe it in a moment. So we have, let's call it theta, tangent of theta is equal to, remember tangent is um, opposite over adjacent. So one point, negative 1 1.5858 over negative 1.4142. So negative 1.5858 divided by negative 1.4142 is 1.12. 1, 3. Theta is the inverse tangent of that, so inverse tangent of the answer we just got is going to be 48.27 degrees. Now, 48.27 degrees by itself doesn't actually say a direction. Uh, 
we have to set, we have to sort of describe our direction a little bit more carefully. So what we would actually do with something for this is with this as we've drawn it here, we can say south of east. What does that mean? It means that we're going to go 48.27 degrees to the south, starting starting from when we're facing e uh, whoops west. Excuse me. Starting from when we're facing west. So we're facing west, and then we're going to turn towards the south 47.27 degrees. And that matches this diagram. The last part of the problem is asking us the total distance traveled, which isn't too difficult. Again, I'm just I'm trying to avoid flipping the paper over, so I'm just going to put that last part up here. But total distance. So the total distance is going to be this three miles here, plus the two miles here plus the 2.1248 miles, which is equal to uh, 37.1248 miles. Example, three forces are acting on an object as shown below, each measured in newtons. What force must be exerted to keep the object in equilibrium, where the sum of the forces is zero? So we, this time we have the diagram already, so we don't have to start by figuring that out. Uh, keeping the object in equilibrium, to actually tell you what this means, it just means that the sum of the forces in all directions is equal to zero. So let's take a look at this picture. So our goal is to take this picture and figure out what the sum of these forces are, then find one force that will neutralize it. So let's label our different forces. Let's just do um, F1. F2 and F3. And let's see if we can figure out the component form of each of these vectors. So F1 is pointing, it has a length 7 and is pointing directly to the left. So that one's going to be, whoops, it's going to be negative 7, comma, 0. That's pointing directly to the left. F2, well the length of F2 is 6 newtons but it makes a 30 degree angle with the horizontal. So if I draw a triangle over here, we have 30 degrees, we have 6 over here. Uh, we can go through the trigonometry for this one and do uh, sine and cosine. These are known values with our uh, chart of known, this is part of our chart of known values, but if you remember the relationships for the 30, 60, 90 triangle, you will remember that this short side here is half the length of the hypotenuse, and that the longer leg is going to be square root of 3 times the length of the short side. And so this gives us our F2 vector, which is going to be 3 root 3, comma, 3. The third vector is a 300 degree angle from the horizontal. So there's a 300 degrees. So it's going to be 270 to here, which leaves us with only a 30 degree angle right here. And we're in the exact same situation as before. We just have to worry about our signs and our hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 4. And so there's our 30 degree angle. Here's our 60 degree angle. So again, the shortest side is half the length of the hypotenuse. And then the longer leg is the square root of 3 times the length of the short side. And so our F3 is going to be equal to, we need it to go down and right. So the right part is 2, positive 2 the down is going to be negative 2 root 3. And so we can add up these vectors, F1 plus F2 plus F3, and that will tell us the current force that's being applied to this object. So negative 7 plus 3 root 3, oops, plus 2, comma, 3 minus 2 root 3, which we can then plug into a calculator and get a decimal approximation for. Negative 7 plus 3 times the square root of 3 plus 2, whoops, Close that parentheses, plus 2, 0 0.1962, and then over here, 3 minus 2 times the square root of 3 is going to be negative 0 0.4641. And so this is the sum of these forces, so the neutralizing force will need to be the opposite of this. So the force that we're going to add, let's just call this thing F, is going to be negative 0 0.1962 comma positive 0 0.4641. And so this is the force that we need to add to this in order to neutralize these three other forces.